The only pieces of a Formula One car that make contact with the ground are the tires. But what are the different compounds and what do they do? Tires have played an important role in earning the victory in Grand Prix races for as long as cars have raced each other. That makes sense as the only points of contact between the car and the ground through which every piece of engineering wizardry must eventually be funneled. Find out more here. Although technology has advanced in tandem with the rest of Formula One, the fundamental difficulty of tires has stayed almost unchanged since the inaugural World Championship race in 1950. How do you get the greatest grip and consequently corner speed out of your rubber without wearing it out so quickly? There are further twists even before you consider the additional wet weather tire allocations and the somewhat altered figures regulating weekends with the sprint format. Tire compounds describe the hardness or softness of the tire on a specific type of tire, and they inject a significant variable into the F1 tire equation. For dry weather conditions, drivers can select from soft, medium, or hard compounds on any given weekend. These slicks are labeled red, yellow, and white. A full wet compound marked blue is also available for races in heavy rain, as is an intermediate marked green for a damp in-between track surface. Pirelli, the Italian firm, supplies all of these. While there have been periods of tire war competition in the past, with as many as nine manufacturers shod cars in world championships, Pirelli has been the sole provider of F1 rubber since 2011. Over the course of an F1 weekend, how many tires can a driver use? When you realize that resources are constrained by restrictions, the tire plot thickens. For starters, each driver is limited to 13 pairs of dry weather tires for the whole three-day weekend. Slicks are distributed based on compound, with each driver receiving two hard sets, three medium sets, and eight soft sets. There are further twists, even before you consider additional wet weather tire allocations, and the somewhat altered figures regulating weekends with the sprint format. Following each of the three practice sessions, drivers must return two sets, leaving only seven for qualifying and the race. In addition, they must retain at least one set of soft tires on hand for possible participation in the Q3 session. Those who make it that far must return this set after qualifying, while those who do not are allowed to keep it for the race. If that isn't enough to think about while organizing your weekend, drivers must also employ at least two different slick compounds during a fully dry race. This means that at least one pit stop will be required on race day. Drivers may even replace tires more than once if they believe it is a strategically advantageous advantageous decision and has saved enough sets during practice and qualifying. To cover wet conditions, each driver has access to four sets of intermediaries and three sets of wets. Finally, the number of dry sets over the weekend is lowered to 12 for sprint race weekends. Drivers are required to utilize soft tires throughout qualifying. Drivers must return the set with which they completed the most laps in the sprint race after the race. While the rules governing tire strategy are phrased in terms of drivers, the weekend tire plan is made by the team. The first practice day is typically used by teams to test different compounds and acquire a feel for the optimum tire strategy for the weekend. This choice is based on information provided by Pirelli. Deterioration witnessed during a long run, replicating a significant portion of the race, the nature of the circuit, and the weather forecast. If rain is forecast later in the weekend, dry tire resources are less stressed since drivers can draw from their wet weather allocation while keeping their dry allocation intact. If the race is going to be held in hot weather, which normally means more tire wear, teams will need to make sure that they have enough rubber to cover plenty of tire changes. The circuit configuration influences tire strategy on several levels. If if overtaking is difficult and getting stopped behind another car is expected in a race, a team may opt for additional pit stops as a convenient way to have their driver running on a clean track rather than losing time behind a slower competitor. Also, if the walls are close together and a safety car is more likely in the case of an incident, 
teams may prepare for more pit stops because changing tires takes relatively little time when your competitors are compelled to drive around the circuit slowly. Once the target resources are determined, teams may plan their tire usage for the remainder of practice and qualifying accordingly. In an ideal world, they would use they would all use soft tires for all three stages of qualifying because nailing a lap time is more about performance than endurance. However, the rules require compromises, the effects of which in terms of available tires may not be obvious until the completion of the race the next day. Why are some tires grooved while others are not? The primary function of tire grooves is to disperse water from wet road surfaces. That's why all consumer automobiles have grooved tires. They must operate safely in all situations. However, grooves do hinder dry weather handling to some extent since they restrict the quantity of rubber in contact with the road. In a road car, this isn't important, but in the tight and competitive world of F1, a completely slick tire is desirable for getting around bends as quickly as possible in dry weather. A slick tire is linked with maximum performance for race viewers. In the early decades of the World Championship, Formula One cars used grooved tires, but slicks began to appear in the early 1970s. These quickly became popular. However, from 1998 to the end of 2008, teams were once again required to run grooves. This tactic was implemented to slow cars down, although few people remember the tires of the era fondly. Wheels with a curved or rounded form are common on supercars. These are called alloy rims or forged rims and they have a concave or convex curvature. Straight wheels, on the other hand, are flat with no curves. The primary distinction between curved and straight wheels is that curved wheels are lower in weight, stronger, and provide greater aerodynamics. The curved shape of the wheel allows it to cut through the air more efficiently, lowering drag and enhancing performance. They are also intended to improve braking cooling, which is critical when driving at high speeds. The difference in performance between curved and straight wheels can be significant. Curved wheels decreased weight can aid acceleration and braking while increasing aerodynamics. With modern performance automobiles gaining ridiculous amounts of power, traction technology is having a hard time keeping up. Increasing the contact area is maybe the most simple way to gain additional traction. Off-road trucks have larger tires and lower air pressure to maximize the area they can grip. Low PSI is out of the question at supercar speed. Speeds. So wide and tall, it is to achieve a larger footprint for the tires of RWD. Because the front tires aren't laying down power, they don't need to be as massive to maintain traction in an RWD. So by employing smaller tires in the front, weight is lowered and the aerodynamic design can remain shorter up front and gradually reach the height of the back tires. Think of a truck's boxy shape to fit tall tires under the body. F1 racing wheels are not naturally curved, rather they appear curved due to the design of the tire itself. For performance reasons, F1 tires are often built with a rounded or convex shape. The tire's curved design creates a broader and more consistent contact patch with the racing surface. A continuous contact patch is essential for maximizing traction and grip, especially during the FOSS turns and maneuvers. The curvature of the tire contributes to improved handling and cornering ability. The form helps to distribute load and forces evenly, letting the car handle bends and corners with more stability and control. An F1 car's aerodynamics are meticulously adjusted for speed and performance. The curved curvature of the tires contributes to the vehicle's overall aerodynamic efficiency by lowering drag and increasing downforce. Curvature can also help with heat dissipation. During high-speed racing, racing tires are subjected to tremendous tremendous stress and heat generation. The design promotes efficient heat dissipation, minimizing overheating and preserving tire performance. The curvature of the tire aids in maintaining consistent tire performance during a race. Tire behavior consistency is critical for drivers to forecast and control the vehicle's dynamics, especially under shifting track conditions. While the tire appears curved, the wheel itself is typically a flat or slightly concave disc that holds the tire in place. F1 tires are the result of rigorous engineering efforts to enhance performance across multiple parameters like grip, handling, aerodynamics, and heat management. And that's a
wrap for today's video. If you enjoyed what you saw, give this video a big thumbs up and click the subscribe button below to ensure that you don't miss any of our upcoming material. Turn on the notification bell.